Okay, in this example, we're looking at what's called the Great Downhill Race. So you can see in the figure shown over here that we have a contest between a hoop, an empty can, a solid cylinder, a sphere, and a box. They're all being released at the same height, capital H here, and on the same incline with the same sort of angle here. And they're all being released from rest at the same instant in time. Some of them are rolling, the hoop, can, cylinder, and sphere, and one of them, the box, is sliding down the ramp without friction. So the big question is, which one will win the race to the bottom of the hill? And does rotation affect the outcome? Okay, so to solve this kind of problem, this is a problem that involves conservation of energy. The object's initial gravitational energy it has is being converted into kinetic energy. Or, and if it rolls, it's also being converted into rotational kinetic energy as well. So, to solve this problem, we're going to be using energy initially is equal to energy finally. And at the very top of the hill, these are all placed at the very top at rest, so they have no initial kinetic energy. They really only have gravitational potential energy, which is given by m g h and then as they roll down the hill they're going to have some rotational kinetic energy which is one half i omega squared and they'll have some translational kinetic energy which is one half m v squared and that v by the way is the v of the center of mass so the center of mass of each of these objects so and that i here is the i of the center mass of each of these spherical objects or cylinders or whatnot. So this is the general equation and then to determine who's going to win the race it's going to be the one who has the fastest speed at the bottom. I hope that would make sense. So if we could find out the speed that they have when they reach the bottom then their finishing speed at the higher the speed then probably they're the first one to get there if it's a constant angle. So let's say solve this. Um, and we can do, for example, maybe an example like just the hoop. You see the hoop has a rotational inertia of, um, well, we'll have to look back in the notes if we've forgotten that. Don't worry, we we'll provide that on the test or quiz. Well, there's our chart and there's our thin hoop, which has a rotational inertia of mr squared. So i is equal to mr squared, and then we could solve it over here. So for the hoop, we would have mgh equals one half mr squared times omega squared plus one half, whoops, m v center mass squared. But ideally we really want to get rid of that omega, which is the radial velocity, or angular velocity, sorry. And we want to convert that into a velocity that's related to the center of mass velocity. And if you recall, the velocity of the center of mass is given by the angular velocity multiplied by the radius. So therefore we can replace the angular velocity with the velocity of the center of mass divided by the radius. So as we continue here for the hoop, we have mgh equals one-half mr squared, and then we have the velocity of the center of mass divided by the radius squared plus the translation of kinetic energy of one-half mv squared. And you now will see that there's a velocity of the center of mass in both terms being squared here. So if we simplify that term here, we're going to have one-half m and these r's here will cancel out, so we'll just have one half m uh, velocity of the center mass squared, or v right there, plus another one half m velocity of the center mass squared. So those two will combine just to give you one m v center mass squared equals m g h, and you can see the masses cancel out. Just like the radius became irrelevant over here, the masses become irrelevant as well. They don't depend really on the shape of the object, nor the mass. So the velocity of a hoop at the bottom 
is going to be given by the equation g times h. So then we can apply a similar method and figure out what would be the velocity of, say, the solid cylinder in a sphere in a box sliding down, which we already know we've done that before. So for example, if we now move on to, say, the solid cylinder, we need to look up that rotational inertia. And over in our diagram, we can see that the solid cylinder has a rotational inertia of 1 half mr squared. So I, for the cylinder, is 1 half mr squared. And we're now going to go through all of this and just modify it. So now we're going to be doing for the cylinder. So I've raised a few things. I'm going to replace the hoop now with a cylinder. And now I'm going to replace the rotational inertia with 1 half mr squared. So then there's another 1 half mr squared. And so again, the r's cancel out, and we get 1 quarter m velocity squared. And so we get mgh equals now a quarter plus a half will give you 3 quarters mv, center mass squared. The masses cancel out again. And our velocity of the center mass for a solid cylinder is 4 over 3 times gh, the square root of all that. Okay, so it looks like the cylinder has a slightly faster speed than the hoop, and therefore it's going to be falling behind the cylinder as it is shown in the diagram. So let's move on to the, the sphere. And we'll need to look back at our notes to find out the rotational inertia of a sphere. And then in our table here, we have the rotational inertia of a sphere is equal to 2 fifths mr squared. So I center mass is 2 fifths mr squared. And now we're going to plug that into over here. We're going to replace the rotational inertia now with 2 fifths mr squared. And now we're going to see the twos that these will cancel out here, and we'll end up with, um, well, I guess I'll leave it in here, 2 fifths mr squared, and then the r's cancel out, and we'll end up with 1 over 5 m velocity squared, or the center mass, and now we have mgh is equal to 1 fifth plus 1 half. So that's uh, going to be think of this, but I guess we could do a common denominator 10, so that would be 2 fifths plus 5 tenths, so that's going to be 7 tenths m velocity of the center mass squared. And so the masses once again cancel out, and you get the velocity of the center mass for a sphere is given by 10 over 7 gh, so it's 1.7 now times gh in that square root. This was like 1.33, so again, we get a faster velocity for the sphere, hence it beats the cylinder. But what about the box, the box that's sliding down? Well, it doesn't have rotational inertia. It's just moving in a straight line. So it only really has uh, translational kinetic energy. So we're going to need to modify our solution a bit here. So we're not going to have any of this, no rotational kinetic energy. All of the gravitational energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy. So the box's gravitational potential energy is all converted into kinetic energy. The masses cancel out, and so the velocity of the box is given by root 2gh. So it looks like first prize will go to the box. That's first Second prize will be going to the sphere. Third goes to the solid cylinder. And then the hoop. But what about the empty can? I guess we haven't talked about that. I kind of left that to the end because the can, yes, it does have rotational inertia, one half i omega squared. And so let's change this and do the can for a moment. What do we do about the can? Well, it's the same setup as all the other circular objects. But... Uh, the rotational inertia for the can is not the same as a cylinder or a hoop. What is it? Let's go back to our earlier notes, look up the rotational inertia of something that is similar to this empty can. What geometric shape would be close to a can? Because, you know, earlier we were doing a thin hoop, and we assumed the mass was perfectly distributed over this very thin cylindrical shell. But the 
can is not quite that thin. So it's really more of a hollow cylinder with two different radii, an inner radius and an outer radius. So really we need to be using this formula. So the rotational inertia of the can is going to be 1 half m and then r1 squared plus r2 squared. And without going through the entire problem and solving it, because we have two different radii in here, um, you can see that the rotational inertia of the can, or, or solid cylinder, is uh, not solid cylinder, but like um, hoop that has larger mass, I guess, thicker shell, is somewhere between a cylinder and a hoop. It's not as small as 1 half mr squared, but not as big as mr squared. It's in between these two. So since its rotational inertia is in between the hoop and the cylinder, it means it's going to fall between here. So the velocity of the, of the can will be not as slow as the hoop, but not as fast as the cylinder. So it's going to be basically in between this region. Okay. If you notice, hopefully you saw a pattern. As the rotational inertia decreases, then you find that it's easier to rotate it, and hence it'll achieve a faster velocity at the bottom, and hence it'll reach the bottom at a quicker, it'll be like the first, for example. So um, that's the key idea. The box essentially has no rotational inertia, so I is, is essentially zero, and so that's the lowest rotational inertia, so that's why it's going to be the first to get down to the bottom. It has no rotational kinetic energy. All of the potential energy is being converted into kinetic energy. Uh, in general, by the way, if you would like to, you, you, you could, um, instead of solving it individually as I did, you could just say, okay, the energy initially equals the energy finally. You have potential energy mgh. You have the kinetic energy 1 half mv squared. And then you have this rotational kinetic energy 1 half omega squared. Um, you could uh, substitute in what i is equal to c m r squared. And c... Um, is depends on what it is. So for example, C for a hoop is just one. C for a cylinder would be um, one half. And C for a sphere would be two fifths. And then if we solve through this and replace I with C M R squared and we replace omega with V over R, we get mgh equals one half mv squared plus one half times c m r squared multiplied by v all over r squared, and that reduces to mgh plus one half mv squared on the right side plus one half c m v squared. Notice that the radius cancelled out, making it irrelevant to the geometric shape of the object. The radius does not matter, nor does the mass. The mass cancels out in general as well. And so we have a 1 half v squared plus a 1 half cv squared. And if you were to rearrange here, you could rewrite the velocity of the center mass would be equal to uh, root 2gh all over 1 plus c. I didn't show all the work, but if you just uh, algebraically manipulate it, you'll get that answer. And all you have to do now is just replace in your values for C, and you'll get each of these formulas over here.